On Sunday, 19th of October, 1986, a random delivery man delivered a letter to Delegiwa, a renowned Nigerian journalist who had a reputation for being an ardent lover of truth. The letter was delivered to his house at number 25 Talabi Christian in Adeni Jones Avenue, Ikeja, Lagos. Delegiwa was with his friend and colleague Mr. Kayode Soyinka when the letter was delivered. What Delegiwa didn't know is that this wasn't an ordinary letter. As he opened the letter, what happened next changed the course of Nigeria political history. But before we continue, if you are a fan of true, strange and mysterious stories that blow your mind, you are in the right place, that is what we do. If that makes you happy, help the like button unleash its hidden superpowers. Click it to give it the strength it needs to become a superhero. Delegiwa was a celebrated Nigeria journalist who was the editor-in-chief of Newswatch magazine, a company he co-founded in 1984 alongside Ray Ekbu, Dan Agbese, and Jacobo Mohammed. As a journalist, Delegiwa was renowned for his unwavering commitment to the truth. During his time, he dedicated his efforts to uncovering the corrupt and illicit actions of the then military government and politicians. This and in the recognition, support, and trust of the people. In fact, his fans proudly call him the father of investigative journalism in Nigeria. At some point, the military government saw him as a threat as he always exposed their shenanigans to the public. No government illegal deals or corrupt practices go unnoticed without Newswatch magazine or covering it. This didn't go well with the military government of the day and what happened after that was history. There are many theories, suggestions, and rumors about the deaths of Delegiwa, but we can all agree on one thing. The publication of his magazines were giving some powerful people sleepless nights. So, on Thursday, 16th of October 1986, about three days before his death, officials of the state security services interrogated Delegiwa over a column he wrote on his magazine. It was about the introduction of the second tier for the exchange market, SFEM, by the then head of state, General Ibrahim Babagida. In the article, Delegiwa made a remark which was, SFEM must succeed, otherwise those in government won't be stoned on the streets. Again, Colonel Alilu Akilu of the Directorate of Military Intelligence, DMI, also questioned Delegiwa over his relationship with some people dealing in arms importations. The next day, Friday 17th October, he was invited to the headquarters of the SSS at 15 Awolowo Road, Ikoyi, Lagos. He was accompanied by Ray Ekbo, but Delegiwa was the only one taken into the director Ajibola Kole Togu's office. During the interrogation, four allegations were levied against him. First, that his magazine Newswatch was planning to write another side of the story on Ebitu Ekiwi's removal as chief of general staff to General Ibrahim Babangida. The second allegation was that Delegiwa promised to defend Alozie Ogubwaja, a superintendent of police and spokesman of the Lagos State Police Command, who had accused soldiers of negligence during student riots, which took place in early 1986. Delegiwa was also accused of holding discussions with the Nigeria Labour Congress NLC, Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the National Association of Nigeria Students, NANS, to carry out a socialist revolution. Lastly, he was also accused of planning to import arms into the country for the revolution. The President Muhammad Buhari led military administration issued degree 20 which stated that any person who without lawful authority deals in, sells, smokes or inhales the drug known as cocaine or other similar drugs shall be guilty and liable of conviction to suffer death sentence by firing squad. So on the 22nd of April 1985, Chinyere, who was popularly known as Gloria Okon, was about to board the Nigeria Airways flight at the Aminu Kano International Airport Kano, where she was apprehended and arrested for possession of substances suspected to be heroin, which weighed about 57 grams and other drugs as well as local and foreign currencies. 
Gloria Okun was said to be friends with General Babangida's wife. Gloria Okun's husband was also a military officer who was killed in one of the military courts. Ever since then, Gloria Okun, who was now a widow, had been trading between the United Kingdom and Nigeria. Then she was caught with drugs and according to Degree 20, she was to be sentenced to death by firing squad. But something happened that shocked everybody and Delegiwa was determined to find the truth about it. A journey that many people believe led to his untimely death. Mama Vasta, who was supposed to arrest Gloria Okun, claimed that she died in detention. She went as far as parading a dead woman to show that Gloria Okun was actually dead. Most Nigerians believe this story, but Delegiwa suspected that there was a foul play. He was determined to uncover the truth. After a thorough investigation, he discovered that Gloria Okun was alive and that Mama Vasta actually put her on the next available flight from Kano to Lagos after she was apprehended in Kano airport. But Delegiwa needed core evidence. He needed irrefutable facts. So he got information that Gloria Okun had delivered a baby in the United Kingdom and they were having a naming ceremony there. She sent a French photographer to the place to take photos of Gloria Okun as evidence that she was still alive. Guess who was also at the naming ceremony? The wife of the then military head of state, Mariam Babagita. <laughs> Kayonde Soyinka, who was Delegiwa's friend and the Newswatch magazine's London bureau chief, brought back the photos that the French magazine had taken of Gloria Okun. It was on a Sunday morning on the 19th of October 1986. They were about to have their breakfast when Delegiwa's son, Billy, came with a parcel addressed to his dad and met for him alone. It wasn't a big deal for a reputable journalist like Delegiwa to receive anonymous tips from well-meaning Nigerians. Moreover, he had received a call from Kole Akilu about 45 minutes earlier, telling him all the allegations levied against him had been dropped, so he was really in a good mood. Nobody knew where the letter came from. The letter was delivered to the security man by an unknown delivery man so it was untraceable. With his recent discovery about Doria Okon, he excitedly opened the letter. Delegiwa never knew it was not an ordinary letter, that it was actually a letter bomb. So as he opened the letter, it exploded and blew off his upper leg and seriously affected his lower body. Kayode Soyinka, who was with him when the bomb exploded, was temporarily deafened. Delegiwa was rushed to the first foundation hospital, Opebi Road, Ikeja, where he breathed his last. While he was being taken to the hospital, he kept on saying, they got me, they got me, they got me. But who he was referring to is still a mystery to this day. After his death, the police launched a series of investigations, but no lead was found. It was a well-planned assassination. Up to this moment, nobody knows who delivered that letter or who was behind the assassination of Delegiwa. So my question to you now is, who killed Delegiwa? Kindly share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you.